Welcome to the Working Audio Tools podcast, the podcast where we discuss all things mixing, ranging from gear, analog versus digital, interviews with audio industry professionals, and documenting mine and Paul Third's journeys to becoming full-time mix engineers, including the odd mix comparison as well, of which there may be another one on the way for this season. We've been talking about budgets and what gear we would get with different budgets from £1,000 to £5,000 to the unlimited budget episode, which was loads of fun for mixing and mastering. And this week, we're going to be talking about plugins with a budget of just £1,000. Now, £1,000 may sound like a massive number for plugins, but I can guarantee if you go through your plugin folder and receipts and add up what you've spent on plugins in the last year, five years, 10 years, however long it may be, I suspect you might be surprised, maybe even mortified by the amount of money you have spent on plugins. Before I ask Paul how much money he spent on plugins, which actually I know the answer, it's probably going to be close to zero. I do need to tell you about the sponsors of this podcast. This episode is sponsored by Baby Audio, again, a maker of creative instruments and effects for music production. Baby Audio plugins are all about solving problems and adding character to your mix, including Spaced Out, the lush effects processor combining reverb, delay, and modulation into one plugin. Check it out on this slide guitar part. We'll play the dry audio first and then the wet. Go to babyaudio.io to learn more and get 15% off any order with the code WHAT15 at checkout. So I have worked out a combination of plugins that going through my mix templates, I couldn't live without. And if I had a budget of £1,000 to spend on plugins, this list is what I would get. There's a few others on the periphery that I think would be important, maybe taking the budget up another 500 pounds or so depending on whether they're in a sale but we'll talk about the key ones in a moment and paul i believe has a a number of free plugins and he's got some great options for you coming up now i will place affiliate links to all of these sales in the youtube video description and podcast show notes if you'd like to support the channel purchasing your plugins any plugin through any of the links is a great way to support the channel we do get a small commission it's not much but As Tesco say, every little helps. And that also goes for the hardware gear. We've never actually plugged this in in the videos, I think, other than an overlay in the video. But yeah, any of the hardware sales you have, if you want to support us going through Toman and Sweetwater, does help. It does help, you know, cover studio costs and things like that. So we can keep delivering this quality banter to you. (laughs) As soon as we discussed this episode, there was one thing for me that was like, no brainer, required no thought. And that is not going to be a surprise to many people, which is the Fab Filter Pro Bundle which is 25% off at the moment at £495. So the DSR R2 Pro Q3, I use without fail in every mix. What about Volcano? I, 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 could, I don't see you being a Volcano, man, because when I've watched Dan Worrell's videos on it, man, you have, that stuff can get deep, super, super deep. Oof. Yes. Um, I, I believe that is in the total bundle, which All is right, okay. currently a bit more expensive. I don't personally use that. I do use Saturator. Uh, Saturn, sorry, the saturator yeah. with with caution, but I'm not the biggest fan. It's almost too versatile for my simplistic brain to understand. But uh, honestly, with Fab Filter, you can mix and master. Basically, that gets you most of the way there. That's coming in at four nine five. Second up is the Slate Trigger Two plugin. Obviously, I like drum sounds. We're talking about sampling drums. Slate Trigger 2 is £100, and you get a library of plug um, samples with that. Now, this is one close to Paul's heart because Paul is good friends with one of the developers of this plugin, which is Kick Shaper from WA Productions. And I'm going to let Paul talk about a bit more about that, but basically, Kick Shaper on bass, drums, and toms is it's almost the only plugin you need, isn't it? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. It's mental because the amount of people that have messaged me and said, Paul, this is like all genuinely I use on kick. It's all I've been using on bass and stuff. It's crazy. I use it on kick. I use it on bass. 
I only use certain settings and certain things and the certain things that I like and certain things that I don't like. But once you get your head rimmed kick shaper and once you get your head rimmed vocal shaper, I, I, I use that on my vocals now. Uh, I don't use all the, all the features, but I do use it in my template. And uh, even Emra's D-Res plugin, I use that all like in mostly every mix now just to see if there's any whistles or any horrible mm. kind of resonances that I, that I think could be cleaned up. And it's super cheap. Like you could get those three plugins probably for, I don't know, maybe 60, 70 quid or something like that. Maybe eight. Yeah, maybe 60, well, 70 quid. Kick Shaper is, I think, $16, yeah. which <laughs> is about £11. Yep. So, I mean, you know, absolute no brainer. I've not used Vocal Shaper yet. And I forgot to on the next mix that we're going to do a battle of coming soon. But I'll get on to that. Now, the next one for me is pretty much industry standard now. And this is one of those plugins that's become industry standard because it's just so freaking useful, uh, which is Soothe 2, obviously, kind of goes without saying. I'm pretty sure everyone listening to the podcast will know this. I don't need to talk about it. But again, it goes on multiple channels, particularly potentially resonant instruments like guitar amps, pianos, overheads. And I use it in mastering as well sometimes with caution. But that's uh, so useful for How getting rid of resonance. Just now, it's one hundred and sixty-nine pounds. Right. Okay. The next one I use is K Clip uh, from Kazrog. Uh, that's twenty-eight pounds. My mate Justin got me into that. Shout out Justin if you're listening. And um, it it's maybe not the most versatile uh, clipper, but it's obviously got a threshold control. That's and the you can job. Go between a that's single the job band that you and need a multiple to do. band. Yeah. It really does the job, and most of my clipping is going on a drum bus or my drum and bass bus, and I might put it on the master bus if I don't use gold clip, if I want the gold clip sound. But K-clip, I just feel like I can get away with it, hit it a few dB, and not really hear it that much. So it's quite musical. Where else are you using clipping? I do kick, snare, toms. Sometimes I'll do it on the drum bus if I feel that, that I could maybe tighten up a little bit. Bass, and I use Master Plan on the, the mix bus, and that's got and clipping with the limiting. So, yeah, that's really normally all I do. There may be a certain element that I maybe feel is maybe like jumpy in one part or something like that, or again, maybe just a little bit peaky, and I might just maybe use a bit of clipping just to keep that in check but normally it's kind of I'm thinking more about my low end so I'm thinking kick bass and then I'm using my snare because in most mixes and drums you normally find that your snare is the thing that's normally interacting with the limiter the most and again just controlling the bass yeah. a little bit as well because again when it comes to your limiting your low end is always going to trigger that first so if you get those things in check you'll normally find that your limiter's timing is more accurate and um, when it's triggering its gain reduction it's, con- it's triggering it consistently so you'll get a more transparent, natural kind of sound in limiting, in theory. Yep, and that enables you to chase after the low LUFS numbers, which we're all after at the moment. Now, I, I didn't really, I'd heard of clipping, right, for you listeners until, but I hadn't really, it was on the list of things I needed to educate myself about on this journey to developing my mixing skills. And it must have been a year, year and a, year and a half ago, when Paul said, get yourself a clap, <laughs> And I was like, how did I know f- you were a way to do that? I knew you were exactly <laughs> a way to do that. Clap, cla- clapper, clapper. I can't, clapper, I can't even say it. Um, and I was like, what is he on about? And then obviously understanding the concept. If, you, if you're not into clipping, it, it really is your best friend when it comes to drum bus and, you know, accent dynamic controls. Um, beyond clipping, Master Plan from Music Hack, I think is on sale at the moment at £100. And I did a video on this comparing Logic's master bus processor thing, which is actually quite basic and came out quite harsh, versus Ozone, obviously with all the um, Ozone plugins that you get. It's very customizable. But So I let it do its thing in that video and then tailored the sound in master plan to my ears and everyone in the comments was like, yeah, master plan just sounds far better. It sounds great. And it's, it's a simple but effective plugin, much like yeah. a northerner. Just simple to the point and it fucking works. Um, so that that's on my go-to because that goes on, certainly on my mix bus, even if I'm printing something to go to mastering, I leave it on because 
the client has signed off on the sound that they've had with that on from from about well before they've by the time they've heard the first draft they've heard it with master plan on so i didn't take that off but i may back off the limiting for the um mastering engineer if i'm not mastering it myself uh and the final one which i just it, I, I love is specter from waves factory 89 pounds for me that is that's my go-to plugin when i'm referencing on the amphians or on my anchor sound cores and i need the the bass or the kick drum to stand out at about i don't know 100 or 200 hertz if it, if they're like really subby and i need some prominence or a 3k on the bass or you know a little bit of vocal presence this is adding harmonics like an eq but it's not adding eq it's just adding harmonics at those frequencies that you dial in as you would a parametric eq it's just delightful uh, it's one of my favorite plugins so that whole bundle there the fab filter pro bundle 495 slate trigger 2 100 kick shaper 10 soothe 2 169 k clip 28 master plan 100 spectre 89 pretty much bang on the nose at a thousand pounds now there's a few going through my templates that i left off because I felt like I could get around them. But these are also important plugins. Sonox drum gate on kick drum every time, sometimes snare drum. Sonable smart gate in every mix at some point, even on backing vocals. Great, useful plugins. So I don't have to manually edit stuff out. Uh, spaced out from Baby Audio, as you heard in the intro of the video, £34. That's just one of my go to guitar effects for leads. Ozone 11, currently half price on Plug-in plug Boutique at 195 Is it worth it for full price at £400? I don't know. Leave your thoughts on that in the comments. Stage 1 is really useful. I'm just talking about all the plugins that you're going to talk about, Paul. I'm basically <laughs> stealing your airtime here, aren't I? <laughs> and obviously the final one is God Particle, but I feel I could probably do that with some parallel processing. Don't tell Jason I said that because he'll... Uh, <laughs> Definitely not come on the podcast now, will he? <laughs> no, no, he will not. He will not. And remember, we do have his number for the one yeah, time we want to yeah. rinse that contact. Hi, by the way, do you remember seven years ago we were at Abbey Road and uh, <laughs> you, you gave us your number? Oh, what, you've changed it since, shit. Because yeah, <laughs> you got harassed by giving yeah. it out at that event. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, Ed here. You may recognise my voice from doing all the other Distro Kid advert segments. This time, I didn't want to just do a typical advert talking about stuff to do with DistroKid. I actually wanted to give you my feedback about the service because I genuinely do use DistroKid for uploading my music. And I know Paul does, and it turns out Dan Worrell does as well. I've used DistroKid since 2019. As you can see on the screen, I have six releases so far. It is genuinely super easy to use. The tracks get into Spotify within 24 hours, which is remarkable. Apple Music takes a little bit longer. I'd suggest giving that 10 to 14 days. The hyperfollow links are really useful for advanced promotion of your tracks. And the promo cards are really great visual aids for social media promotion. Ooh, I particularly like that one. DistroKid collect all the royalties from your streaming services. And here you can find an itemized breakdown of where all your income has come from. There's also a DistroKid referral where you can save your friends $10 per sign-up by creating your own VIP referral link. Yeah, so, that... Paul, you've got lots of exciting plugins that I'm probably not even aware of, uh, and certainly you use quite a few that I don't use. You even make your own plugins, don't you? Every so often, yeah. But I think what's important to talk about is kind of free plugins first, because if you're on a budget with a grand, like as Ed's just shown you, that's going to go very, very, very quickly. But especially if you're paying uh, retail prices. Obviously, you're going to wait till Black Fridays and you're going to wait till the sales and stuff because there are always sales on. RRP is just a myth. <laughs> Bar of it's like Soothe. Soothe is normally the same price all year round. But I would have to say in terms of free plugins, if I was on that tight a budget, analog emulations would all be analog obsession. I would go down that route. and every I would just download every single one of his plugins because they're free. So if I wanted an analog style fucking plugin, it was there just as an option. And you can again they're free. You, you go on his Patreon and anybody who's anybody in plugins will know analog obsession. Uh, so I'd do that. And I in terms of the bundles, I'm not a big fan of bundles, but if I had to get a bundle, I would go for the Sonable one that's 200 quid, where you get all the smart plugins. 
because I do use smart EQ, um, you know, on certain things every so often. If it's just something that I just feel like maybe not working right in the track and I want a bit of inspiration and then it go, well, a lot of times if I do it on acoustic guitars, electric guitars, it normally just does the thing. And I find it's quite handy to use every so often. It's got the adaptive mode in it that I like. Uh, smart comp, mm, I, I didn't really, it didn't really ring that good with me. Um, so I don't hardly ever use it. Uh, smart gate, yes, yeah, smart gate is great for drums. I, that's like my go-to gate for drums. Uh, in terms of the smart limit, I was using smart limit for about two years. It was only until I got flatline two, and then I got a master plan that smart limit kind of came off the, the two bus for the limiting duties it's a great it's got a sim to it but i actually quite like the sim of it so you get that as well uh, and yeah i just I, I rate the sonable stuff i always i've always found a good use for them yes yeah. S- smart, smart reverb, EQ4 smart reverb the, um... as well you know what that's actually something that see sometimes i always find that i've got a set of reverbs that i use see sometimes if i'm just like ah, this just not fitting the track sometimes i just go to smart reverb just like what a producer would do just to see if it, what it gives me and then I see if I can maybe play with that and see a lot of times that's kind of pulled me out the shit a little bit when sometimes my reverbs that I've got normally are just aren't working and that's good. Okay. What I like about the smart stuff is that when you're struggling or when you're just looking for a bit of inspiration it can kind of bail you out the shit sometimes and it saves you a lot of time instead of going through all these different presets and all these different yeah. verbs and different yeah. things. Just a word on smart EQ4 from Sonable. The update in number f- in version 4 with the dynamic control, you can control how much of the frequency band becomes a dynamic EQ is actually a really wonderful feature. And then something you taught me, which I think we covered in one of the early videos when Sonable sponsored some episodes, was that you can put multiple instances of it on different channels and then group them and then prioritize things, yep. which is mind-blowingly useful yeah so i think i like to use that because it just helps so even as you said the gripping function and pre-mixing could sometimes be handy see if i've got lots and lots of guitar parts i always do it on guitars where i find it's just really easy to just go right get them all queued roughly the same way and then i can group them and then print that um and export the stems and or export the track sorry i should say just that the studio one way of doing that is called export stems so export the tracks um mixing template so that would probably be the only kind of bundle um, I would have. I suppose this does class as a bundle. Um, it's eight hundred and fifty pounds, uh, and you'd be like, Ooh, be like, whoa, smashing through the budget. What I is know, this? This is Melda M Triple X. This is the plugin that I use to create my own plugins. It gives you mm. every Melda plugin, and I mean every Melda plugin. Melda is the most hands down, the most underrated plugin developer of all time. They really are. I'd- probably agree with that yeah ah i've forgotten the one of the main uh, plugins talking about exactly oh my say. god how did, you how forget did i that? forget that how did i forget that having mentioned um drum sampling and stuff eh? and gates and drum gates and stuff oh my goodness yeah so yeah melder m auto align for your drum phase alignment uh stereo acoustic mic alignment stereo piano microphone alignment oh I've even used it on piano samples that were one millisecond out of phase. I remember that, yeah. That's how much I can hear on the PSIs, and I'm not joking. Yep. So the great thing about Melda MXXX is that not only can you use um, its building blocks to create your own plugins, you can create your own plugins with every Melda plugin, and they have got everything. So when me me and Embra recreated the kit MoQ, we just used every tool that we had. And trust me, see, when you've got the Melda bundle, you have got everything. You've got, like... Uh, it's journey. an extensive list of plugins, isn't it? Yeah, he, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, what are you using for verbs just now? Because I've, I'm not using the UAD stuff because I sold the Apollo. And he's like, oh, I'm using um, uh, Turbo Verb. I was like, oh, fuck. And it's, see what I found with Melda? Especially when you've got MXX, you just really forget the amount of stuff that you've got. You've got M Turbo Comp, you've got M Turbo EQ, M Turbo Reverb, you've got... All the effects you've there's even a plugin called um, Auto Stereo Fix. Honestly, that is a diamond little plugin for when you, for example, you might have, have like two mono tracks, right? You normally you pan them left and right, two different. You've maybe got like a, a rhythm guitar and a lead part, and you'd normally pan them left and right, go a bit stereo. But you might be like, oh, there, there's a bit of a volume difference. If you put that to a stereo track and then you put um, Auto Stereo Fix on it, it makes the left and the right match. Melda's just full of tools that when I'm like just thinking, oh, I need to fix something, 
I got a melder. Uh, the building plugins thing, it was fun to begin with, but it takes a lot of time. Like, see, when you get into, because the thing is, you get into the GUI and stuff like that, and you're then making custom fucking buttons and stuff. And before you know it, you're just like, fuck, I should be mixing, <laughs> but I'm making a plugin that I'll probably never fucking use. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm coloring in rusty screws on a yeah, GUI totally. for fuck's sake. <laughs> but, uh, but you could do everything in it. And when I, when I say everything, honestly, I mean, even the fact that like, um, it's got all the high quality oversampling with it. I mean, you can get oversampling, I think it's like times 300 and something. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. High, and when I mean high quality linear phase, high quality linear phase, you get auto gain compensation, I think, on nearly every plugin. Um, yeah, that's useful. Now, I'm pretty sure it's like 70 plus plugins, right? It's ridiculous, right? And you can do everything with it. So once you've got that, I would be like, right, that'd kind of be me. And if I want, if a plugin comes out, then I would just get Plugin Doctor, which would be my next one. This would be controversial. But it's 30 quid, right? Of course. Plugin Doctor, right? Because at the end of the day, if I've got MXXX and I've got Plugin Doctor, then I can see exactly, like, kind of roughly what things are doing. And in most cases, like with them, when, I, when we did the MoQ, we were able to recreate it and get perfect nulls up and down via automation. Like, we automated the proportional queue up and down in the null <laughs> just to be that much we were that wankers we were that much wankers that were just like yeah this is how we do things in the audio science world <laughs> and then I sit back and go fuck that took me a week <laughs> what a waste of my life <laughs> right. uh, but yeah you've got everything there uh, so plug in doctor and as well it saves you money in the future because you know as I've shown on my channel many times it's been one of the main reasons that's allowed me to not buy plugins or like not get distracted by them. The amount of times I've just put something in and I've been like, done a few tests, bump, 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 not interested. And they'll be like, oh, you've not even heard it. It's like, I don't give a shit. Because like, honestly, one of the hardest things in audio engineering is getting distracted by plugin marketing. It is the devil. It is like always that little devil on your shoulder going, yeah, but maybe we should just demo it. Maybe it's better than the saturator that we've got. Maybe it's better than this. Maybe it's better than that. Seven so said it was great. And then if you're on forums and shit like that, then goodbye. <laughs> that the, the, you're you're gone. You're a goner. You're going to demo it. You're going to end up thinking you like it, right? Katelnikov, right? One, I would say one of the best free compressors you can get. I've got the the gentleman's edition. Now I paid for this. I'm going to tell you now. Tokyo Don Labs is the only plugin developer. Now I know people that know Fabian, so I could message him if I really wanted to and do that whole NFR thing. But I loved the amount of depth that you went into so much, I just bought the GE edition. So I bought the gentleman's edition of Katelnikov and What's the, the, difference? the TDR Limiter 6. I cut, um, it was extra features that I wanted. I, cut, I, like, I can't even remember because I'm just so used to using the, the gentleman's edition, but it, it, Fabian does that much, or Fabian, Fabian, like he does such an amazing job that even the free stuff is fucking amazing. But um, I just respect his work so much and I get so much use out of them. Again, uh, you'll, Nicholas from Panorama Mastering, he's done loads of videos featuring uh, the Katelnikov. He uses it a lot in mastering. Yeah, uh, Streaky talks about it on his mastering course, which is why I he... got it. And it, it, it does live in my mastering template. Now, speaking of um, those kind of plugins, it has just occurred to me that there may be some people surprised why I haven't included any Universal Audio plugins. Hmm in this list because I do use I do use them but I just felt like if I were to prioritize everything under a thousand pounds you can get everything with the fab filter bundle that you need mm -hmm. yes you get the colors and the legacy products with UA which is amazing and they are great plugins but if it push came to shove fab filter right for value Thank you for th thank you for your honesty, Ed. Thank you for. I your thought you'd be losing sleep over that, Paul. So <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd be plugging doctoring the shit out of, you know, an eleven seventy six versus the. I've done that. I'm done. I'm oh, done. God, of course you I'm have. done. I'm Nerd. done with all that stuff. No, I say that. Oh, I thought then... you said I've done it. Right, 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 no, I'm I'm done, done, okay. I probably <laughs> have done. It. Honestly, I've done that many tests. I don't even <laughs> want to think about it. Jesus, I've wasted so honestly the amount of time I've wasted on fucking idiots online going. Yeah, but it does that. Have you, have you tried that? No, I tell you it does that. And then I test it and I'm like, ah, oh, thank you for wasting fucking an hour of my life. Uh, so is that, is that really their fault though, Paul? Um, Chris yeah. talked about stop this. Stop being an idiot. Length. Stop, stop, be, stop, <laughs> stop fucking like letting placebo get in the way. And like, basically, honestly, like I still remember there was a guy and I'm like, oh, why? And it annoyed me because I knew the answer. And he was like, 
plugins diminish the audio. Anytime you pass any audio through a plugin, it diminishes the audio. And I was like, what are you talking about? If you if you put FabFilter Pro Q3 through a plugin and it doesn't do anything, it'll fully null. Guess what? Fucking fully nulled. And I done a little video about it and I was like, why am I doing stuff like this? Why am I wasting my time for stuff that I know? And it's so difficult. That's why this fucking video that, that came out this week came out was because I was like, not one person has actually kind of said like how easy this thing is to kind of replicate and it's not that difficult. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to have to do it. And I did it. And now, no, I feel like, I feel like a re- it's like a really shitty one night stand. Then you're just like, oh, I didn't have to do that. Can I just, I feel dirty now. It's done. It's like, it's good at the time. And see, now it's done. I'm just like, oh, I, just, I want it done now. I'm finished with it now. I want to, <laughs> I want to move on <laughs> to something else. Uh, but in terms of like kind of, TDR plugins, right? See uh, to- the TDR limiter six, Mwah. and chef kiss, right? Th- that is my main clipper that I use most times. It's amazing the fact that you get high quality compressor, you get a peak limiter. Now the peak limiter is really handy because it's cleaner than a clipper, um, because it's ba- it's a basically a limiter, and limiting is more it's cleaner than uh, than uh, than clipping. So, so what I'll sometimes do is, because you've got the modules, I'll sometimes go maybe a dB or half a dB peak limiting, and then I'll do a half a dB of clipping. Now, what's great about the, the limiter 6 is that you get more clipping options. So you can choose your knee from soft to hard, and you've got kind of like a ratio of that. And you can choose, there's three different modes. So you can choose a low frequency clip. So you'll basically just prioritize the low frequencies. And you've got an open mode, which I'm pretty sure is a multiband, and then you've got a brick wall, which is like your kind of standard, but you'd think of like a hard clipper. I don't know, I think I've got everything with Melda. And then again, stock plugins. Like Studio One has a ton, a ton of like great stock plugins. CEQs. I just use the fucking standard digital one. Like if it's um certain things I want to do, it's a little bit fancy. Like I'll use Kirchhoff because again you've got the analog modelled curves and I've got all my presets from when I've done all my tests so I've got all the things that I've modelled and I've covered and you get the pull tech in it as well and you don't need to worry about EQ cramping and stuff like that but to be fair and most times I'm just normally using the Studio One EQ again I can go, the reverbs are good There's, Studio One's great a lot of the DAWs have lots of great like yeah even... I mean for, 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 for simple high and, high and low pass filtering I'm always using the stock Logic and Pro Tools uh, plugins and they're very low CPU usage in yep. comparison to some of the other plugins that we've mentioned, which, as everyone will know, uh, really is important and adds up, especially what I'm finding, especially things like uh, Universal Audio's Sound City Studios Reverb Room Effect plugin and Gold Clip and Ozone. They are so CPU intensive. It's like, yep. cool, we've all got M1 Max now, great, we've got like <laughs> twice the speed. Yeah, but plugins are now twice as complicated and yeah, bigger, big so we're just still constantly playing catch up and keep ahead of ourselves with <laughs> the algorithms yep. and processing power. It's mad. It is mad. And, and, and it doesn't help when you're an aliasing snob like me. I'm getting better with it now. I'm being a little bit more realistic about when aliasing occurs well, and when it doesn't. Well, I'm above 18k, so I don't really <laughs> care about that. Um, now, where do you stand on subscription bundles? Because out of all the subscriptions, I've enjoyed some of the SSL ones that I've got free with the UF8. And, oh, there is one I haven't mentioned yet, but I've mentioned it in a previous episode, which is the uh, SSL channel strip that goes on every bus that I use now for the very simple reason. I don't use, I might use a compressor on it because anything that's just tickling that first amber light on the compressor just sounds good with those um, plugins. Don't use EQ so much unless I really need to, but I literally use it for the solo feature because in Pro Tools, if you solo a bus, as those people using Pro Tools will know, you get nothing because you have to solo all the inputs into the bus as you would on an analog desk. In Logic, it does all that behind the scenes for you and I've grown up on Logic and that was one of the most frustrating things for me. Moving from Logic to Pro Tools, I now full-time mix in, say that, I lie, most of the time mixing new clients get mixed in Pro Tools I've got a few that are in Logic still. But just that one thing, the solo, the bus feature, if I have the plug-in on the bus, allows me to do that, which is fantastic. But the, the Universal Audio subscription, I would be tempted by if I was going to go down the subscription route. I don't have any experience with any others. 
Acoustica does one, but I, I don't know exactly what it is because I've never I've never needed to look into it. Nebula needs to be like a it's a big thing for me because obviously I use Tim Petherick compressors. We all know he's he's nailed every single analog versus digital test I've ever done. The man's the master in the box. He's the only man I know that can do it consistently because he's that kind of he's basically what I see as me if I made plugins like he doesn't release stuff unless it's like measures I nearly identically and it sounds as as perfect as he can get it. But so if Acoustica did a subscription that included Nebula 4, then I would go down that route. I did have the Plugin Alliance one for a long time. And to be fair, I do think the Plugin Alliance one is probably the best subscription on the market in terms of value for money because it's got everything. In, ter- in terms of wide range accessibility yeah, as well. Time. Yeah. So um, I was, I mean, I was a subscription junkie. I had Plugin Alliance, Slate at a time. I mean, I was that, mug, honestly, I was that mug before I got into YouTube and Plugin Doctor and stuff. Like, I had a rent to buy with Waves plugins. I've spent nearly a thousand pounds on Waves plugins. It still cripples me to this day that I did that. And I got honestly, like, so blown away by the market in, and as many people do, and they just sit there gathering dust to the point where I've still got version nines. <laughs> and I've never updated them. Version nines, which are now unusable, and if you've mm. kept up to date with the OS systems, and you'll have to pay fifty percent of that again to make them usable again, it's a horrible business model. Let's not let's not lie about it. Yeah, I know. I know. I found horrible a way. Business I found model. a way of getting version nine to work still. But I, I it's just, a great business model for them. <laughs> yeah, totally. It tells me it. It's genius I, for them. I, I, I always call it the whoop because every time they get um, an update plan, they go whoop. Whoop, whoop, here we go, another one. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's take everybody's money. DistroKids sponsors the Working Audio Tools podcast and 30% off your first year subscription can be found in the podcast show notes and the YouTube video description. Hyperfollow is the easiest way to place all of your content in one single place, making finding all of your content super easy for your audience. Upload artwork for your release, edit the information, and apply links to all of the streaming platforms your music is going to be available, which of course on DistroKid is potentially all of them that exist now and even in the future. Add social media buttons so your audience can find you and your latest music video. Creating a beautiful landing page with a preview of your music is easy with Hyperfollow. Hyperfollow links can be created for all of your releases and it enables you to create pre-save links for your audience to pre-order your music before it's released. This link is shareable on all of your platforms and a great way to promote your next release only with DistroKid. When it comes to plugins, right, I think we are very fortunate because, you know, we we know a lot of people and we we do have developers throwing plugins at us. And I always find that when you don't buy plugins, you become less protective over them. Uh, I think that's the hard thing about investing your money and stuff is that you will have confirmation bias and many people can't accept when they've been diddled or they just get to a point where like I just don't have a use for this anymore. So out of that bundle that I mentioned talking about paying for plugins, I've never known anyone get anything out of FabFilter. Oh yeah. So I Dan Warhol, pay... I think that's it. <laughs> Dan's the only one. Well, well he used to work for them, didn't he? And I, yeah, I bet even then they made him pay for them. Um <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I paid for the Fab Filter, I think, in the first ever time they did a sale, because when they launched their plugins, they didn't do a sale for many years. And then there was one Golden Black Friday, they did a 25% off, and I reckon they creamed it. Because by then, they had the reputation, and everyone wanted in, including myself. And I've, they've never done more than 25% off. They used to only do it once a year. Now they seem to be doing it a bit more frequently, like everyone else. I paid for Slate Trigger 2. I paid for Kick Shaper. I paid for K-Clip. But yeah, so half of that list I did pay for. I mean, they are the only plugins I've paid for in the last four years, so that's also quite good. But <laughs> yeah, it is, di- it is difficult. Slogging yeah. away to YouTube. I, know, is, no, I, I see it as a benefit because I don't get so precious about stuff. And then I normally find that the stuff that I do use all the time is because I genuinely do have value in it. Um, like Soothe, I think I was, like I waited to get Soothe for a long time. Then when Oak Sound were, or Oak Sound were like, yeah, okay, we we'll want to work with you. I was like, ching yes, quality. And I do use Soothe, but I, I, I'm, I'm finding myself being a little bit more um, reserved with it now. I'm not over-soothing stuff anymore. Uh, the only other plugin that I know that I would, I would buy, because I got um, the upgrade for it, because I've been using the original version and they've upgraded it and the, the, they're not supporting the old version, is Sonimus Britson. Stage one. 
Oh, asked, okay. It's anonymous Brits. And so they, they contacted me and says, look, we're not supporting this anymore. Look, we've got end console. Do you just want the upgrade? I was like, yeah, come on, send it. Uh, but I was, I was worried. It's not RME of them, is it? I know, but I know what I was, I was worried because uh, Britson is a sim that it's been a big part of my sim because I love the cross talk in it. But I tried it out in a mix and, it, and it's got more features and I've not lost that kind of openness with the cross talk that I like. It's great because it's on every channel. It's great for game staging. And again, I use the high pass filters on it. End console is something that I, I would really like. Do I need it? No, but it is a big part of my sound. Uh, Nebula, if I didn't have Nebula, I'd be gutted because, I, again, I wouldn't have the Tim Petrick stay level or his RA6. Tim's stay level is like one of the biggest things to my vocal sound to the point where it's like I've been um and on, um and on. I'm speaking to Tim a couple of weeks ago. I'm so worried that, that Acoustica stops supporting Nebula because I know G's not interested in it. G's the CEO, Giancarlo. He, I know he wants rid of it. You can just tell he does. And if he stops supporting Nebula, then I get, like, I'll get to a point where I'll be that far gone that I won't be able to use Tim's plugins anymore, which is a shame. So I was looking at the audio scape, I was looking at the retro um, stay level, and I'm like, oh, it's like th- the retro is like three and a half grand, audio scape's like 1600, because it's a big, big, big part of my vocal sound. And, not and the that- analogue will sound better. Mm, this is t- honestly you've not but you'll have to commit to it and that's the problem yeah honestly or, or run stuff live through the analogue and then you've got extended printing time and yeah I've told you before see when, see, to analog. <laughs> see when I tell you to trust me right Tim's the one guy that I can tell you trust me that man does analogue I am telling you he does it that's why it takes him so long to release plugins because what other developers do yeah other- but there'll still be a there'll still be a, a depth and a You'll hate that word. Oh, the yeah, yeah. fullness and the three Dness that comes from the um, phase shifting between sure, the two channels. Yeah, sure, there will be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> remember, remember, I've spoke. I know many people that he's actually sampled. I'm not the gear. picking a fight with you on that one, Paul. I know, <laughs> I, I know, I know. You know what? I'll, but I will say, when I, I do have a bit of confirmation bias when it comes to Tim, but it's because he reminds me of me so much, um, but way more intelligent. Uh, but what a yeah, terrifying thought. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, some of the conversations we've had, he's told me stuff that's went right over my head. But um, yeah, I'd say that would that would kind of be me. Kind of more or less is more trying to use what I've got and trying to just use plugins more as kind of problem solvers. Uh, yeah, the, there are some reverbs that I do like. Like I use a lot of the even tide stuff. The SP twenty sixteen is my favorite reverb that I use on all my sessions. I use it Never for... Never even heard of it. Really? That was, uh, it was a really, really big uh, reverb and I think it was like... Valhalla Vintage was my go-to reverb for a yeah, long a good time. Yeah. And for some reason, I... Well, I know why. There was a time when I only downloaded the AAX versions of plugins because Nobed didn't think he'd ever use another <laughs> DAW. Uh, and, and that's one of the ones I haven't decided... I haven't got around to re-downloading the... Um, sorry, the AU versions I was using for Logic. And I haven't downloaded the AAX versions for Pro Tools. Um, but that was good. But honestly, R2 from Fab Filter, just I use it for everything now. Yeah. Just it's, it's so flexible. EQ, delay, gating. It's got everything on it. Yeah, it's great. Pre-delay, that, I mean. Yeah, that's what I love about Emirates plugins is because he's thought about these Swiss Army knives. So see, like um, in Vocal Shaper, he's got this uh, feature called Cleaner, and it's generally just a gate. And I use it on this podcast. Like, it's one of the best gates for vocals I've ever heard. And it just cleans up everything. But you, you, it's great because you use it and you never ever know that you're using the gate. It's just, Emma is just like so just fine. He fine tunes <laughs> stuff so <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Paul is going to use it. Oh, no, I'm just going to really piss him off in editing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But uh, yeah, I love it. I think that's the way plugins need to be going. I think we need to be getting more for our money. That's what annoyed me with this um, fucking metric halo. Uh, mix head thing I was like it's just a fucking wave shaper like come on like you, you look at uh, TDR the Tokyo Dawn limiter 6 the, the amount of stuff that you do you could do with that is frightening and it's super super high quality you don't have to worry about aliasing and you can do so much with it like see like plugin developers um, like Tokyo Dawn these are the people that show you how much plugins really could be valued it and how much they should cost yes, in reality yeah. you know what i mean so so for um reference tdr limiter 6 is 42 pounds on our friends at plugin boutique i'll try and remember to put a link in the description 
But if I don't put one to this exact plugin, there is a plugin boutique affiliate link in there so you can go and find it. And any purchases through that will earn us a very, very small commission so we can keep these podcasts coming at you thick and fast. All right, Paul, if you could only use, let's have a bit of fun, only use three plugins other than stock Studio One plugins, give me your top three. And I'm going to rule out Ozone because that does everything. Uh, which means I can't use MXXX as well because that is one plugin, but it hosts 70 plus plugins. Mm, yes, let's rule those out. Okay, okay. That would have been the easy one. Right. And feel free, guys, leave your comments with your top three. Absolute Desert Island can't live without plugins. Be interested to see what combinations you guys are using. No, what? Uh, three plugins that aren't stock plugins. Right, okay. I'm and gonna, aren't Ozone. All right, I'm going to go with the vocals because at the end of the day, my vocal sound is like, seems to be the thing that like I always get right. And I think that if you're going to get someone right, get the vocal sound. So I would, <laughs> yep. I would be Tim Petherick. So I would get like the I would get the stay level because it's the one that I can't replicate in the box. I can't do it anywhere else. I've tried the other stay levels. And then it would be ceilings of sound because obviously that's like oh. the vocal. I've moved away from that recently. I have to say, I'm just trusting my ears and going with embracing the textures and EQ of the voice. No, it is. I've, I've learned how to use it better. Like I, I've got more out of it. So I, I've kind of tweaked the way that I use it and it's like Paul Thor tweakery where it's, I've just got it in a way where I could, I could get it to work on basically every vocal now. Um, but before, I was kind of doing it a very set way, and now I've found a way of using it where I could use it on any vocal, and I could stick very closely to the natural timbre of their voice, which works way better. So it would be ceilings of sound, it would be Tim P's stay level, and then, because I could do everything else, kind of just with stock plugins, I'll say Sonomous, I'll say the the end console, just because that is a big part of my overall sound in the mix, like I, I just put the mix through it, and again I get that kind of openness with the separation from the crosstalk, I like using the high pass filters and low pass filters it's very quick, like most of my mixing now is high passing and low passing, I do that before I do like before I go, maybe I should bring down a bit of 400 or maybe add a bit of 2k, I just go straight in with the high pass and low pass filters, and it's amazing how much of the mix you can get done just by doing that. So I'd say three end console ceilings of sound and the Tim P's vary level, which is the stay level. You've had time to think about this now, so come on, you're, you're three. End it. I come have on. time, and I'm and, I, and I'm struggling. <laughs> I mean, I've got to say Fab Filter Pro Q3 because it's just the go-to for everything. Mixing and mastering. I use two of them in mastering. One for stereo EQ with some dynamic stuff and, and then a separate one uh, for mid-side EQ uh, and dynamic stuff, which can cause problems. <laughs> yes. But if done right, it can also work really well. It's, it's primarily the dynamic and the mid-side processing that's just so fantastic with that. I'm not going to go for a drum trigger. I'm surprised you didn't, to be honest, Mr. Trigger Heavy over there. You could do it manually um, though. It's a pain in the arse, but like you can do the melt. You, you, again, you can do the uh, all, all not, the way. Not with not with what I've learned in Pro Tools and my UFA. I've got it programmed to one button. <laughs> yeah, no, I've <laughs> seen that. Next I've transient, seen that. Copy yep. paste. Boom! It's absolutely. I should do a video on it. Although it's not my <laughs> technique, it is on the SSL UFA intro website. I just turboed it up. Oh, Kick Shaper could definitely be up there. Soothe could be up there, but again, we're talking dynamic EQ. Specs is so close to my heart. No, oh, yeah, go with that then. Because there's nothing else you've got that does that in your <sighs> chain right now, is there? No, no. I do want to try Surfer EQ because apparently that is what Spectre does, but it follows the fundamental of the note. Yeah, so I've it'll seen that. do the. I think you can set. I think it does the third harmonic. So it does it an octave. Third order, third order harmonics. So yeah, of, of the fundamental note, which is mind blowing. I do want to try that. I'm okay. I'm going to go Pro Q3. Master plan and Spectre. Boom. There we go. Link links below. It's been emotional. <laughs> <laughs> right. Any obviously comments down below what um you would buy if it was again think of think of a bundle. Think about if you had a grand to spend. Think about free plugins. Think about your top three that you could not live without. Let's create a bit of fun in the comments down below. And um yes, that's all I have for this week. That's all that he has for this week. And um, I know what I was so I was so looking forward to this moment because I was watching the football last night 
And I was like, get in. I was like, get in. <laughs> and fucking Bellingham does a fucking overhead kick. I was like, you are joking me. One shot on fucking target. Fucking asshole. Oh, it Extra was time. Diabolical then... last night. Well, I mean, we deserve to get kicked out, but, you know, we've been in that position so many times where people have fluked it past us at the last minute. So, yeah. And so, yeah, that is emotional. But hopefully. No, what I'm not even going to say. Hopefully, there is going to be an episode where I'm going to be able to get back at him. Scotland is going to be able to get back at England because there's no way that they're fucking winning <laughs> these Euros. So there will be an episode no, where I can no get back. Chance. Not with not with Spain in the competition and France. I just watched them today. Like M- Mbappe will ruin news. But either way, that's it. So yeah, it's been emotional. Thank you very much for your time. As always, my name's Paul Thorne. That's Ed Thorne. We'll see you again next week. Ta-da, or do I mean TDR? Okay, whatever. Bye-bye. <laughs> what the shit joke that was. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Should keep that in the end. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the outtake.